That story father told us yesterday was amazing. Didn't you think so? Which one? The story of Elijah the prophet? Yeah. Hey, by the way, is it father going to tell us the story of another prophet today? Hmm. Yes. He told us he'll tell us the story of prophet Amos today. Yes, Amos. I hope the story is going to be another great one. Let's go to our class. It's story time. Yay! Come on, Matthew. The class is about to start. I'm coming. Good evening, kids. So, are you all ready for today's story? Yes, father. <laughs> All right. So like I told you yesterday, I'm going to tell you the story of Amos today. During the rule of Jeroboam II, Israel reached the peak of its glory. However, the prosperity was enjoyed only by the rich. The lives of vast majority of the poor were in misery. Heavy taxes and unfair interest on loans forced the poor to slavery. They were auctioned like animals in the slave market. The courts failed to execute justice, and not even the religious system was helpful to the poor. The Lord is my shepherd, nothing indeed shall I want. Though I pass through the valley of death, Huh? Ah, uh. Huh? Ah! Uh. Huh? Ah! Uh. Ah! It's dead. The Lord is with me. I fear no harm. The Lord is with me, I fear no harm. Whew, it's so hot today. Amos, Amos! Huh? Who's that? Amos, it's me, Eliphaz. Eliphaz, my friend. Hi, Amos. Eliphaz, good to see you. I heard you're doing well with your business. Hmm, I'm doing all right. Where are you coming from? We are coming from India. We bought some ivory and precious stones from India. Ivory? May I see that? I'm sorry. We sold all of them at Samaria. We stopped there on our way back and sold everything. Those people in Samaria bought everything we had at the price we named. <laughs> hmm. They must be very rich in Samaria. Certainly they are. Those Samarians, they don't know what to do with their wealth. And the women? Oh, their women are loaded with gold. Wow, they must be really rich. What? Who are they? Why are they tied in chains? Who? Oh, oh, them. They are the slaves we bought from Samaria. Slaves? Yes, we bought them for a very cheap price from Samaria. And we are going to sell them in Egypt. We will get a good price for them. <laughs> Slaves? But how could they? God gave freedom to everyone. You, what's your name? Huh? Me? Yes, you. 
Tell me your name. I, my name is Zara. Huh. And she's my wife, Miriam. Zira, how did you and your wife end up like this? Tell me, what happened? We, we are farmers from Jezreel. We are doing fine until last year when the crops failed. So? We couldn't pay the taxes, so borrowed some money from the landlord. But the next year, when we went to return the money, the landlord cheated us by saying that we had to pay double the amount in interest alone. Huh? How can the rich cheat poor farmers like that? That's not it, sir. They cheated people with the weights and measures also. What? Yes, sir. We had to give everything we had, but even that wasn't enough. They? They took our lands too. And then they took us to the slave market and and we were sold to them. We? We don't know what happened to our children. They? We don't know where they are. But, but how could someone do that to you? It's not just us, sir. Everybody here will have similar stories to tell you. I'm so sorry to hear that. Wait here. I will go and talk to your master. Amos, what are you doing there? I was talking to them. Talking to the slaves, huh? Eliphaz, listen my friend. Is it necessary that you sell them only in Egypt? We will sell them to anybody who can pay. Look, I have some gold and silver. And I also have these sheep and cattle. Can you take those and sell those people? Huh? So you are now interested in slave trading, huh? Slaves? They are my brothers. All right, calm down. I'll sell them to you. Two slaves for a cattle and one slave for a sheep. Is it a deal? It's a deal. I'll buy all of them. Here you are. Here, take these chains. No, I don't want the chains. I only want the people. Huh? But we won't be responsible if they run off. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. Master, we don't know who you are, but we will always be grateful to you. What do you want us to do, Master? No, don't call me that. I'm not your master. I'm an Israelite just like you. I am your brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Stand up. Listen everybody. You are no longer a slave to everybody. You are free to go anywhere. I will give you my land for yours to work. You can take that for free. <laughs> you are truly a great man. Amos freed the slaves he bought and he gave them his land. That night, how how could they sell their own brothers as slaves? Amos. Huh? Who was that? Amos. God, it's you? Amos, what do you see? A plumb line? I have measured my people, Israel, with a plumb line. Huh? They are not upright, so I'm going to knock them down. What shall I do? Go to Israel. I will instruct you there. The voice of God reached Amos like a roaring lion. Amos left for Israel the next day as God had instructed, but the sights that he saw on his way made him really angry. Help! Help! Shut up! Shut up, you poor little! <sighs> Stop! Stop it! 
What are you doing to him? Huh? Who are you? Mind your own business. He didn't pay his debts. So we are taking him as a slave. Lord, please help me. Amos could do nothing to help. So he walked away sadly. But he saw many other similar situations on his way to Israel. Stop it! Stop beating him! Oh! No! Please! No! Then why don't you pay his debts? Huh? You give me the money he owes me and I let him go. Do you have the money? I I don't have the money. Then go away, you fool. Don't waste my time. What is happening here? Hmm. Four more. This is only 20 liters. Huh? Uh, but how could that be? I had brought 40 liters. Stop lying and bring me more oil. I... I think there's been a mistake. This scale is wrong. You are cheating me. How dare you? Take this. Ah! Is this the way you collect your debts? Who are you? Get out of here. Do you have different scales for measure? No. We use only one measure. Huh. Huh? Then what are these? Cheating with the scales? There are soldiers here too. No, you won't escape from the Lord with the help of your army. Huh? Go in peace, my friend. The God of Israel is with you. Excuse me, where are you all going? Oh, you didn't know? They have built a large temple in Bethel. And I've heard that the idol there, the golden calf, is really beautiful. Then why those animals? Oh, these are the sacrifices for the god. Can you please tell me how many slaves you have? I have around 150 of them. And I have around 200 slaves. You crush the poor, take their belongings, and now you're offering sacrifice to please God? What? No, look. Offering to God what is snatched from the poor is like killing a son before his father. Excuse me. I have been listening to your discussion. So, are you saying that we shouldn't offer sacrifices to the Lord? Your hands are stained with human blood. God will not be pleased with your sacrifices. How dare you? What are we supposed to do then? You must do justice. You must put an end to slavery. The poor have every right to live freely. You must let them go. In the end, God will judge you for what you do. What he says is the truth. Yes, he must be a prophet. How dare he talk about us like that? Yes, we must inform the chief priest about him. Some people realized that Amos was speaking the truth and they knew that he was a prophet. But some were not quite happy with what he was saying. One day, Amos went to the slave market in Samaria. Here is youth of 20. The bidding starts at 50 shekels. 55 shekels! 60 shekels. Sold for 60 shekels. Here, two healthy boys. Bidding starts at 10 shekels for both. 15 shekels. 20. Stop it. Huh? Who's that? How dare you enslave the people who God had liberated. What? How dare you? Stop the slave trade. Stop. Stop this lunatic! Soldiers! Soldiers, stop them! But before they could do anything, the slaves had escaped. They returned to their homeland. That afternoon, one man who escaped from the slave market reached his village. Paris, it's you! Ha ha ha! Hello, my friend! Oh, it's so good to see you! Paris, did they let you go? 
a prophet. A prophet from Judah came to the slave market and created a riot there. Prophet from Judah? What did he do? He said that the children of Israel are not to be enslaved. Huh. Thank God that there's someone talking for us. Yes, it was the Lord who freed us. We walked home. Hmm. The taxes and the interests. The rich are exploiting us. We can't go on feeding them like this. Huh? Is that? Is that? What is it? It's him. The prophet. The prophet who freed you? Yes. Let's go to him. Master. Master. Who are you? I was in the slave market today morning and you freed me. It's your right to be free. God has liberated you. But I'm afraid now. What if the soldiers come searching for us? Fear no more. We have the law of the Lord to rule this country. The king and the rich have taken the law into their hands. No. The Lord is the king of Israel. Then what about Jeroboam? He he is an imposter who got into power by cheating people. But but the priest and the elders are on his side. Don't worry my brother. All of them have joined their hands in exploiting the poor, but their days are numbered. In the meantime, the landlords and other rich men were getting real upset about what was going on. Nobody, nobody's willing to repay the debts these days. They are saying that the interest is too high. <sighs> Even the tenants are refusing to pay the rent. We must use all our force to suppress him. But why is this happening now? I mean, it was all going very well till a few days ago. It's because of that man. Who? That Amos from Tekoa. He claims to be a prophet. Huh? He wants to free all the slaves, ban all worship and topple the government. What? He's pretending to be the leader of the poor and he's teaching that God is on their side. He is jealous because we are living well. <laughs> We can't let him go on like this. We must do something immediately. People were getting upset about what Amos was preaching to people. And one day, Amos was going by a court in Samaria when he stopped by to listen to a hearing. My lord, this man owes me a thousand shekels, but he is refusing to pay now. Your honor, I borrowed only 50 shekels. And when I went to repay him, he started lying. I don't know what to do now. Your Honor, may I speak to you for a moment in private? Hmm. Come here. Listen, if you can give a verdict in my favor, then I will give you 300 shekels. Please, my Honor, give us justice. He is lying. Please, please don't listen to him. Silence! The landlord is right. The accused must pay 1,000 shekels immediately. If he doesn't pay, then confiscate his land, sell his wife and children, and auction him at the slave market by tomorrow. No! Please don't! Guards, take him away! No! He is lying! Please help! Stop it! Who is it? You call yourself a judge of Israel? Who are you to question me? You, you accept bribes and punish the poor. You sentence the innocent to slavery. Order! Order the court! This isn't a court. You are robbers and murderers, not the judges. It is God who speaks. I have heard the cries of the poor. No one will escape my judgment. Shut up! If you open your mouth again, then I will shut it down forever. If you don't listen to the cries of the poor, then you will be the ones crying tomorrow. Gods, take him away! And the next day, Amos went to the temple where the priests were offering sacrifices. Oh God Almighty, please accept the sacrifice and shower your blessings upon us. Amen! Amen! Give us wealth and prosperity. Give us 
Stop your chanting. Huh? Who are you? Now listen to these words of God. I hate and despise your feasts and festivals. I hate your offerings. But but God has asked us to offer the sacrifices. Go away with your offerings. Never step into this temple again. How dare you? This is the royal temple. You have set up idols against my command. Take them away from my presence. You endure slavery, encourage corruption, and you worship idols. Amos, watch your mouth. I won't tolerate this arrogance. Let justice roll down like waters, integrity like an unfailing stream. God says, your wife shall be forced to go to the streets. Your children will fall by the sword. The people of Israel will be sent into exile because of you. You will die in a foreign land. God holds a plumbing line over Israel. No one shall escape. The king, the priests, and all the judges will be banished. Gods, arrest him. The wrath of God is coming down upon you like a roaring flame. Shut up. Where is your God now? <laughs> Take him to the prison. Let justice roll down. But Amos' call for justice fell on deaf ears. He was imprisoned and tortured for telling the God's word to the people. Wow, that's such an amazing story, Father. Those rich people in Israel had become so cruel. Yes, Lucy. They ignored God's commandments and led their lives as they desired. His words are like a lion's roar, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, Matthew. Now shall I ask you a couple of questions? Yes, Father. Where was Amos from? Amos was from a small village called Tekoa. Correct. And what was his profession? He was a shepherd. Very good, Matthew. Now tell me why he was mad at the judges. He was mad because they were taking bribes to punish the innocent. Correct. That's all for today. Now, I want you all to memorize these quote. Can you? Yes, Father. Let justice roll down like waters. Integrity like an unfailing stream. Now repeat with me. Let, Let justice roll down like waters. Integrity, integrity like an unfailing stream. stream. Very good, everyone. We'll meet tomorrow with a new story. Which story are you going to tell us tomorrow, Father? I'm telling you the story of Hosea. The story of a man who experienced the pain of loving as God did. See you again. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father. Good evening, children. So, children, I'm going to tell you the story of a farmer who lived a long, long time ago. His name was Mika, which means who is like God, and lived in the village called Morse. Daddy, look. We can make a whole bottle from this bunch. Let me taste one. Hmm, this is really tasty. Don't eat too much, Atalia. It could upset your stomach. <laughs> Don't worry, dear. Let her enjoy the God's blessings. If we get such a good yield from olives and figs also, then we can repay our debts quickly. Don't worry about the debts so much. Our King Jotham is a kind man. Yes, he gave us this land and he even gave enough loan to us. He is as good as his father. King Uzia. Hmm. Who knows the way of the Lord? Yes, that's why I told you not to worry about the debts too much. God will provide us. Lord God, we praise you and give you thanks for blessing us with a good harvest. Mika worked day and night on his fields. He hoped to repay his debts to his lenders by this harvest season. That day, after plowing the land, he was returning home. Micah, 
माइका ओ अबे इट्स सो गुड टू सी यू माइका आई लाइक टू टॉक टू यू अबाउट समथिंग शू अबे व्हाट इज इट वेल व्हाट डू यू थिंक ऑफ अ मैरिज बिटवीन जोना एंड एथालिया जोना लाइक्स अ वेरी मच यू नो दैट्स अ वंडरफुल आइडिया व्हाई डू यू कम विद मी टू माय होम and i will talk to my wife about this abhaya it's so good to see you hello how is your wife and how is jonna they are all fine listen go and sit inside we have got something great to tell you listen dear abhaya has a proposal for our daughter huh who is the groom i was asking atalia for my eldest son jonna It's wonderful. <laughs> Atalia, Atalia, come here. Yes, mother. Atalia, we've got some wonderful news for you. What is it, mother? Do you know Abia's eldest son, Jonah? Of course I do. We used to play with each other when we were kids. Hmm. And now Abia has got a proposal for you to marry him. Ha. Huh. Oh she's blushing <laughs> Father I heard what you were talking It's a very good proposal father I know Jonah as a friend and he's a good person Hmm Now that we all agree why don't we fix a date for the wedding Of course do you have any dates in mind How about Friday after next week 6th day of the week day god created adam and eve that's great it's fine with me all right that's fixed then abaya we'll meet at the fields tomorrow and we'll discuss other details of course let's meet at the field tomorrow i leave now father father <sighs> what is it son our king <sighs> What happened son? King Jotham died today. His son Ahaz has become the king of Judah. What? Oh no. King Jotham was a kind man. I wonder how our new king is going to be. He's so young and reckless. Hmm. A king was only 41 years old. May his soul rest in peace. My car, it's getting late for me. I must leave now. We'll meet tomorrow at the fields. Sure Abia see you tomorrow and as they had planned Jonna and Atalia was about to get married that day Children remember to keep the promise you make today Atalia daughter of Mica I promise to marry you according to the law of Moses What is that sound It's the sound of drums It's the king's messenger Listen everybody These are the orders of King Ahaz. Syria and Israel have joined forces against Judah. All males between 16 and 35 must enlist in the army within a week. Oh no, my son. And all the money borrowed from the treasury must be returned immediately. Huh? How? But that's impossible. How are we going to pay our debts at such short notice? No. Why should we send our sons to get slaughtered? No. This cannot be real. God help us. Please. Oh my god. Both of my sons are leaving us. Mother, stop crying. We will defeat their army and come back soon. Father, bless us. Take care of your brother and come back alive, my son. We will father don't worry Mika's both sons left them that day to fight in the war Mika then realized that he was seeing his sons for the last time as they were about to die in that war My lord god please keep my son safe Stop worrying my dear the lord will protect him Mm but what about the debts 
How are we going to repay within a week? Well, we'll have to sell the grain and everything we've got, but even that won't be enough. What are we going to do? I'm going to the market tomorrow. I will ask Laban to give me a loan. Only then can we save our land. Don't worry, dear. It's going to be all right. Yes. Lord God will never leave us. The next day, Mika went to the market for selling his goods. But it was a chaos there in the market. Farmers had to sell their products at cheap prices, and the shopkeepers were making profits out of the situation. What? This is cheating. A shekel for 50 liters? Yes, the prices are going down. Didn't you know? But but that's not even half the price. Listen, if you want to sell, then this is the price. If you don't like it, then you may go elsewhere. But please, I've had to work so hard to produce this. That's none of my concern. Now move aside. Let the next person come. Hello, Laban. Mike, huh? My friend, what brings you here? Laban, I'm here to sell my goods, and I also want to borrow some money. No problem. Show me what you have. Hmm. I can give you two hundred shekels for these. What? Two hundred shekels? That's not even half the price. Listen, Mika, the prices are going down every minute because of the king's orders. Every farmer is desperate to sell their produce. But, but you may check the prices with other shopkeepers here in the market. Nobody will be willing to give you as much as I have offered. All right, I'll take it. I have no other choice. Here is the money. While Mika had gone out to sell his goods. The soldiers came to Morshed to collect the taxes. Help! Help! Give us the money, or give me your bangles. What? What is happening? Isn't that Mika's house? Yes, it is. What is going on? We have come to collect the taxes. Have you got the money ready? No, but my husband has gone to the market for selling our goods. We will pay back the money as soon as he comes back. Now, the deadline was yesterday. You need to pay now, or give us your ornaments. How dare you talk to us like that? Go away! I'm not giving you anything. Let my husband come back, and then, and then we'll pay. Mother, mother, stop it! Uh, uh, leave me! Stop there, you! <laughs> This will be our share. We will come back tomorrow to get the five hundred shekels. That's enough. We have got them. You can leave the boy now. Mother, mother, are you all right? No, we lost everything. Oh God, why? Ha! Oh, oh, it's robbery. The farmers had to sell everything for almost nothing. Hmm. Why is it so quiet here? Atalia, nobody home? Father! Father, you are home. Yes. What happened here? Why is it so silent? Oh dear, the king's soldiers were here when you were gone. King's soldiers? They came here to collect the taxes, but when I told them that we will pay tomorrow, they harassed the whole village and took our ornaments. Father, they were a bunch of thugs. They harassed mother, and didn't let her go even when she pleaded. What? How dare they? There are laws in this land, and even the soldiers must obey them. I'm going to the court tomorrow. I will ask the judge to take action against the soldiers who did this. No, dear, I don't think that's a good idea. They are king's people. Yes, father, the court is filled with soldiers, and they won't like it if you go and complain against one of them. No, I will not let this go just like that. 
punishment should be given to those who harassed my wife. Mika was shattered by what had happened. He thought he could get justice from the courts. The next day, Mika went to meet the judge. Next, Mika, what's your complaint? Your Honor, when I was not at my house, two soldiers came to my house and... Stop it. This is not the place to bring charges against the soldiers. Give me your complaint in writing and I'll forward it to the concerned authorities. Then why are you sitting here? Aren't you sitting there to hear the complaints? Watch your mouth. I am the judge and I can punish you if you offend me any more. I don't care. If you can't give justice to the poor, then you shouldn't be here. God, kick him out of here and give him a taste of justice. How dare you? Huh. You want to file a complaint against us? Here, here, take this. Ah! Mika got beaten by the soldiers. He was very much disappointed. All his life he had worked hard to live a respectable life and today his wife was harassed. The judge insulted him and he got beaten by the soldiers. He had also lost all of his savings in the market today. But Mika was a man of faith. He decided to start working again to repay his debts and to get his house in order. But one day, when Mika had gone to the nearby town, an army of soldiers came to his fields. The king had given away the village of Moshe to the soldiers for building their houses. But the farmers of Moshe didn't know about this. The soldiers marched in to send the farmers away. Hey, look! There's a huge army coming towards here. Maybe that's our sons coming home. But I don't have a good feeling about this. People of Morshet, the army is taking over this village. You must leave this land immediately. You can stay here and be our slaves if you want. What? This is our land. We your slaves? Never. If you resist, then we'll have to use force. We will never let you take our land. We will fight to our death. Yeah, we will never let you step into our fields. Soldiers, attack! The villagers resisted the army and what followed was a brutal massacre. Most of the villagers were killed and their houses were burned down. When Mikhar returned, all that was left of his family and his house was ashes. No! Oh God, those 50 soldiers killed my wife, my son, my daughter. What am I going to do? Where is the Holy One of Israel? Where is the God who came down to free us from Egypt? Don't you have the eyes to see the fields soaked in blood of the farmers? Enough. I can't go on anymore. I'm going to join my family. Mika. Huh? Who are you? I am God, whom you challenged. If you are God, then allow me to join my wife and children. I know your pain. You lost your wife and children. They are my children. I watched my children falling by the sword. Their cry pierced my heart. Then, why do you keep quiet? Mika, you won't understand my pain now. Your children are safe with me. Then please, please allow me to join them. Not yet. Your pain will turn into fury and strength. Go and face the commanders, the judges and the king. They rejected me. Make them drink the cup of my wrath. But, but Lord, I'm old and ignorant. Fear not, you will be filled with my spirit. Mika was filled with the spirit of the Lord. Receiving the strength, Mika became a new man and started his mission. Dayton, you coward, you murdered. Huh? You slaughtered my wife and children. 
You shed the blood of innocent. Who is he? That's Micah, the owner of this place where we built this house. So what? Guards, arrest that lunatic. Get away! Oh, hmm. but when the guards came to arrest him, they got terrified because Mika was filled with God's spirit. You think you can live in peace in those houses? This mud was soaked in my sweat. This land smells of my children. Why don't you do anything? Uh, I, I am scared. You took over our fields. The hand of the Lord is about to fall upon you. Why did you let him go away after he said so much? It's true. Everything he said was true. Our hands are stained with blood. Micah, burning with the fury of Lord, walked to Jerusalem, the capital. After warning the judges there, he then proceeded to the palace to meet the king. Isn't that Micah? Yes, he is. But he, he looks so different now. Hey, did you hear that he terrorized the commander Dathan this morning? It seems the spirit of the Lord is upon him. All right, I think Micah has become a real prophet. You took over our fields. Ahaz, you corrupted one. How dare you sit on the throne of my servant David? Huh? You flooded the streets of Jerusalem with the blood of innocence. Shut up! This is the royal court. So, you are the high priest? Yes, I am. How dare you slaughter innocent babies in the name of sacrifices? Huh? It was. It was sacrifice to the Lord. You coward! Couldn't you cut your own throat and offer a sacrifice? Who asked you to offer human sacrifices? Stop it! I am the king in this country. I decide on laws, and there are courts to ensure it. Because of you, Zion will become a plow land, Jerusalem a heap of rubble, and the mountain of temple will turn into a forest. Your majesty, should we still tolerate this? Your days are numbered. A king will come from Bethlehem. He will rule in peace and justice. Shut up! It is God who made the king of this land. And God will pull you down from your throne. You robbed the poor and crossed the weak. Why is king letting him talk like that? This is what God asks of you. Act justly, love tenderly, and walk humbly. Jerusalem will be purified in fire. It will again become the city of peace and justice. Micah challenged everyone in authority, but no one dared to touch him. God was protecting him. And in a few days, the Philistines captured Morsheth and destroyed the city. Thus the words of Micah were fulfilled. Micah went around the towns and villages proclaiming the message of peace and justice. He was a man who was filled with the Spirit of God. So that was the story of Micah. Did you all like it? Yes, Father. Good. Then shall I ask you a few questions from the story? Yes, Father. All right. Then tell me the meaning of the name Micah. The name Micah was derived from the Hebrew word Michael, which means one who is like God. Hmm, that's very good, Lucy. Now tell me where Micah was born. Micah was born in the city of Mors. Very good, Matthew. Now tell me, what was the first tragedy that happened in his life? Micah had to send his sons away for war. As per the orders of King Ahaz, that was the first tragedy. Correct. Now I want you all to repeat this verse from Micah with me. Yes, Father. Act justly. Act justly. Love tenderly. Love tenderly. And walk humbly with your God. And walk humbly with your God. Now let's say that together. Act justly. Love tenderly. 
and walk humbly with your God. That's very good. Now before we leave for the day, let me tell you which story I'm going to tell you tomorrow. Which story is that, Father? Tomorrow I'm going to tell you the story of a prophet who was sent by the Lord to call the whole nation to conversion. A prophet who was made holy by the holy God. The story of Isaiah. All right, that's all for today. See you again tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father John is going to tell us the story of Saul today. Yay! Haha, <laughs> you're so excited, Matthew. Yes, he is going to tell us the story of Saul, the first king of Israel. Let's sit here and wait for Father. There he comes. <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. Good evening, everyone. So, children, which story did I tell you yesterday? You told us the story of Prophet Samuel. All right. And today, I'm going to tell you the story of Saul. Are you ready? Yes, Father, we are. Saul was anointed as the king at a very critical moment in the history of Israel. Philistines were very powerful and they were taking away the land that God had promised Israelites. The very existence of Israel was threatened. Israel, listen, it is God who speaks. I shall anoint a king for you. But remember this, he shall make the mighty men among you as his soldiers and servants, and your daughters will be his wives and maids. He will take over your land. He will reduce you to slavery. There will be no point in seeking help from God after this. What do you say? We don't worry about that, but today we want a king. Yes, what we need is a king. All right then, you shall have a king within 30 days from today. Gather all the Israelites at Mizpah on that day. In the hill country of Judea, there was a little town called Gaibe. In that town lived a man named Kish who belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. One day, some of his donkeys got lost. He sent his son, Saul, along with a servant in search of the donkeys. This happened a few days after Samuel promised the Israelites that he would give them a king. <sighs> I am tired. Let's search for some more time. Master, forget the donkeys. Let's return back home. They must be worried thinking about us. Won't it be a shame to return empty-handed? I've heard that there is a prophet around here. Let's go and talk to him. Yes, master. Come, maybe he can help us in finding the donkeys. Hey, look, there's someone there. Let's go and ask him. Hey, hello, sir. Yes, how can I help you? Sir, we heard that there is a prophet around here. Do you know him? Oh, did you mean the prophet Samuel? Yes. He is in town. You may find him on top of this mountain. Thank you, sir. Come, let's get to the top of this mountain. Have we reached, Master? <sighs> yes, we have reached the top. Oh, there's someone over there. 
Let's go and ask him. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Could you please help us find Prophet Samuel? We are coming from Gaibe. I am Samuel. Did you? Did you just say that you are coming from Gaibe? Yes, we are from Gaibe. And is your name Saul? Whoa. Yes, my name is Saul. But how did you know? God. It's like you told me in my vision. Thank you, God. Master, we come in search for our donkeys. They were lost a few days back. Don't worry about the donkeys anymore. They have been found. Come with me. You can stay with me tonight. Yes, master. Samuel had a vision about Saul the night before. And when he saw Saul, he knew that he was the chosen one by God to be the king of Israel. Saul stayed with Samuel that night and they were about to return back home the next morning. Saul, Saul wait there. Yes, master. Saul, I want to show you something. Tell your servant to go on without us. You go ahead. I'll join you in some time. What is it, master? Why did you want me to stay? Kneel down, Saul. Yes, master. Saul, God has anointed you to be the king of Israel. You will save God's people from their enemies. Master, I I don't think I'm worthy. I come from a humble family. It doesn't matter. You will know it's true because on your way you will find three men. Huh? One of them will be carrying three lambs. The second will be carrying three loaves of bread and the third will be carrying a wine skin with him. And as you reach Mount Gaibe, the prophets will come out playing music and they will be chanting. The Spirit of the Lord will seize you at that moment. What? What am I supposed to do then? Don't worry. Do what you may at that moment. Like Samuel had foretold, Saul met with the men on his way. And when he reached Mount Gaibe, he saw the prophets coming down chanting and playing music. Ah, it's just like he told me. And now the prophets too. When Saul saw the prophets, the Spirit of the Lord came over him and he was transformed into a new man. Hallelujah! 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 Hey! Hey, isn't he the son of Kish? Yes, he is. But what happened to him? I think the Spirit of Lord has come over him. Is Paul one of the prophets too? Looks like he's one too. Hallelujah! The people of Israel gathered at Mount Mizbah as Samuel had directed them. They were waiting eagerly to meet their new king. People of Israel, you have elected Saul, son of Kish from the tribe of Benjamin as your king. Saul, son of Kish, long live the king, long live the king. Saul, God has chosen you to protect Israelites from the enemy. You should always remember to be just and kind and be like a father to them. I will, Master. You should also care for the poor and you should not accumulate wealth. Do not build palaces for your own use. 
I will never forget your words, Master. I will never forget what you have done for me. Thank you so much. After Saul was anointed as the king, he returned home and started working in the field as usual. After about a month, two men came to meet him. My king? Huh? Who are you? We are coming from the north, from a town called Jabesh Gilead. What do you want? Why have you come here? My king, the Ammonites have surrounded our town. We surrendered and begged for a treaty, and they agreed. If they have agreed to your treaty, then why have you come here? My lord, they are crazy people. Do you want to know the terms of the treaty? Hmm. They want to pluck out the right eye of all our residents. Huh? And we have got only seven days to give them an answer. If we don't agree, then they will attack the town and kill everyone. Is that so? Hmm. Please save us, my lord. We have got nowhere else to go. Don't worry. I will take care of this. You can return to your town now. God will look after you. Thanks, my lord. Saul assembled a huge army by threatening the people of Israel. And a huge crowd came to march with him. Listen, everyone. Jabesh Gilead is under siege. And the Ammonites are going to kill everyone in town. We must attack them and protect our people. Yay! Yay! Get ready to attack as soon as you hear the trumpet blowing. Yeah! yeah! Attack! attack! Under the leadership of Saul, the Israelites attacked the Ammonites and they won the war in a very short time. Ha 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 ha! We have won! Long live King Saul! Praise the Lord who gave us a king! We now have a king! Nobody will dare to attack us now! <laughs> Where is my son? Jonathan! Jonathan! Where are you, Jonathan? I'm here, father. Put me down, please. Why did you call me, father? Jonathan, I need you to go to Gilgal for a sacrifice. I want you to move to Gaibe with a thousand men. The rest of the army will come with me to Gilgal. Gaibe, but you know that the Philistine fortress is on the way. What if they attack? Then you must take a different route. After my sacrifice at Gilgal, I'll come and join you. All right, father. I will do as you have told me. You take care, my son. Saul arrived in Gilgal and waited for Samuel to arrive to begin the sacrifice. Saul's son Jonathan had reached Gaibe. Master, we have been waiting for seven days. Can't we offer the sacrifice and continue with our journey? No, it must be Prophet Samuel who's offering the sacrifice. Lord, Lord, huh? Who is it? <sighs> Who are you? My lord, I was in Gaibe with your son. And... And... And what? What happened? And the Philistines attacked us. Huh? Is my son alright? Tell me. Is Jonathan alright? Yes, my lord. He's safe for now. We won at Gaibe. But... But... Tell me, what happened? All the Philistines have joined forces, and they're planning to attack again. Huh? They might attack any time now. We must stay here any longer, my lord. The Philistines will attack our children. Hmm. There is no time to waste, my lord. We must act quickly. Bring the offerings for the sacrifice. I will do the sacrifice myself. Get them quick! Yes, my lord. Saul's son Jonathan was stuck in Gaibe with Philistines waiting to attack his army. Saul wanted to raise there as quickly possible, so he decided to start offering the sacrifice himself. Huh? Is he offering the sacrifice? 
Samuel reached the temple while Saul was offering the sacrifice and he got very, very angry. Stop it! Huh? Stop it, I said! What are you trying to do? I... I... Are you trying to snatch the priesthood also? What right do you have to offer the sacrifice? I'm sorry, Master. I was waiting for you for so many days. And I just got the news that my son Jonathan is in trouble. The Philistines can attack Gaibe anytime. So, you thought you could offer the sacrifice yourself? You couldn't wait for me? I'm truly sorry. But if we delayed any longer, my son might get killed. Huh? You and your soldiers? Did you forget that it is God who leads Israel in war? Master, please do not misunderstand me. I offer the sacrifice to implore God's help. Don't you know that obedience is better than sacrifice? What obedience are you talking about? Is it my fault that you are late? What? No arrogance too? God is going to take away your kingship. King! King! What is it? Many of our soldiers are deserting us. What? But why? They think that you will not be able to lead them. Huh? You can do whatever you want. I am leaving. Why are you punishing me, master? You know what your mistake was. You did not wait. You are not obedient. Master, please. Don't touch me. God has chosen another one to be the king. Master, please forgive me. Please. Master, forgive me. Samuel was very depressed with what had happened at the temple. He couldn't stop thinking about it at all. What wrong did I do? I have loved and respected Samuel more than my father. Why is he being so cruel to me? How could I have waited any longer when my son's life was in danger? Am I thinking this way because I do not trust in God? Did I offend him by offering the sacrifice? Saul defeated the Philistines in Gaibe and saved Jonathan. But... Saul became victim to a maniac depression. He could never get over to what had happened at the temple of Gilgal. Master, I have brought you the wine you asked. Hmm. What is this? It tastes like blood. Master, this is the best wine in all of Israel. How dare you call me your master? I am Saul, and I am looking for father's donkey. Donkey? I'm... I'm sorry, master. Where are my donkeys? I have been looking them for so long. What is he talking about? I don't know, but something is seriously wrong. I think he is possessed by a ghost. Yes. He could be possessed. It is neither ghost nor devil. It's his own fear. Don't you remember? It started in Gilgal when he broke up with Prophet Samuel. Ah, yes. He has been like this for so long now. I hope he gets back to his senses soon. Huh? Who is this? Samuel, it's you. Stop strangling me! I'm going to kill you! Ah! <sighs> what just happened? It was just a dream. <sighs> Saul's trouble increased every day. The people around him brought a musician thinking that music will comfort him. And they invited David, a great musician, to comfort Saul. But this musician, David, went on to become the next king of Israel. 
Wow! Did he really go crazy, father? Yes, Lucy. Saul's mind was troubled with what had happened, and he could never recover from it. Did his son die in the battle, father? No, he didn't. Saul's son Jonathan survived, and he became a great friend of David. Father, was Saul really a bad person? Hmm. No, my dear. In fact, Saul more or less had a preparatory role, like John the Baptist. John the Baptist had made way for Jesus, and in the same way, Saul prepared the way for David. Hmm. I think his breakup with Samuel changed him as a person. You are correct. When Samuel left him, his spirits were crushed, and he fell victim to depression and jealousy. He could no longer distinguish between friends and foes, and he ended up killing many innocent people. So, shall I start with my questions then? Who can tell me which tribe Saul belonged to? Me, me. <laughs> yes, Matthew. Saul belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. Correct, Matthew. Why did Israelites demand a king? Israelites wanted an army to defend themselves, and they demanded a king so that he can command the army. And who were the enemies of Israel? The Philistines, father. Good. Now, who appointed Saul as the king of Israel? It was Prophet Samuel. Correct. And what was Saul's profession before he became a king? He was a farmer. And what was his father's name? Hmm. His father's name was Kish. Good, Matthew. Now, who can tell me why Samuel got angry with Saul? Saul was waiting for Samuel at Gilgal to offer a sacrifice, but while waiting, he got the news that his son was about to be attacked by the Philistines. So, in order to save his son, he had to reach there quickly, and he decided to offer the sacrifice himself without waiting for Samuel. And when Samuel saw Saul offering the sacrifice, he got really angry. Samuel also told him that another person was chosen by God to be the king of Israel. This troubled Saul's mind for a long time, and he fell into a depression. <laughs> Very good, both of you. So that's it, children. We'll meet again tomorrow then. Father, are you going to tell us the story of King David tomorrow? Hmm. Before I tell you the story of King David, I'll tell you the story of David, the shepherd. Is he the one who defeated the giant Goliath, Father? Yes, Lucy. David killed a giant named Goliath and defeated the Philistine army. Wow! It's going to be wonderful. We will meet tomorrow at the same time. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Father. Wow, it's so beautiful. What is it, Jimmy? Jimmy? Oh, don't worry. He must be playing with a fly or something. Shut up, Jimmy. Huh? What is it, Jimmy? What's over there? He must be playing with you, Lucy. All right, all right. I'll come with you. Are you coming, George? No, no. He's playing with you. You go ahead and take a look. I'm just gonna lie down here. Hey, Jimmy, stop! What's in here? Huh? It's a kitten. She's so cute. You look so tired. Didn't you eat, you poor little thing? Where's your mother? It seems she's lost. Let me call Matthew and George. George, Matthew, 
come over here. Huh? Isn't that Lucy? Matthew, Matthew, stand up. George, Matthew. Huh? It's Lucy. Why is she calling us? Come on, Matthew. Let's go. She could be in some trouble. Huh? Coming, Lucy. <sighs> what happened, Lucy? Hey, guys, look what I found. Wow, she is... She is so beautiful. Isn't she? I found her in these bushes. She is alone and I couldn't find her mother anywhere. She looks so weak. Maybe her mother has gone out to fetch some food. Can I hold her, Lucy, please? Hmm. All right, here. Come here. Oh, you poor thing. Are you hungry? Where is your mama? Hello, kids. Father John. What's going on here? We found a kitten by the bush, Father. We are waiting for her mother to come back. This one looks so weak. I don't think she has eaten anything in days. George, go and get some milk. Quick. Yes, Father. Hmm. Let's wait for her mother to come back till evening. And what if something happened to her mother? What if she doesn't come back? Then we will take care of her, Matthew. Don't worry. I've got the milk. Very good. Now keep it down there. All right. Let's sit here for some time. Father, can you tell us a story while we wait here for his mother? That's a great idea, Lucy. Now, which story do you want me to tell you? You told us yesterday that you tell us the story of Prophet Jeremiah today. Ah, yes. Now listen carefully. In the little village of Anathoth, not very far from Jerusalem, a boy named Jeremiah was learning his lessons. Since Jeremiah was the son of a priest, he had more difficult lessons to learn and less time to play. But Jeremiah was quick to learn. He knew all about the history of Israel and how God had helped by leading them. As Jeremiah grew, he became bigger and stronger. His heart was filled with the love for his country and with the love of God, one day, as he was walking in his fields. Jeremiah. Huh? I'm going to bind you as the prophet of the nations. Huh? But Lord God, I'm too young. I do not know how to speak. Do not say that you are too young. You must go where I send you and say what I command you. I'm putting my words in your mouth. I will, Lord. Jeremiah, what do you see? I, I see a branch of an almond tree. And I see a cooking pot tilting from the north. In his vision, like the white flowers in the almond tree that was awake while everything else was dead, God said that he would fulfill every one of his words. Jeremiah, I watch over my words to see it fulfilled. And like the tilting pot, disaster is boiling from the north to destroy your land. Huh? Do not be afraid. I will make you strong. You will be like a fortified city. God told Jeremiah that evil days were coming upon his country. He told him that armies would come sweeping down from the north and would destroy Jerusalem and take the Israelites captive. This was the message which Jeremiah was supposed to deliver to the people. The message that God was about to punish the Israelites for their wrongdoings. And no better messenger could have been chosen. Jeremiah was quite fearless and steadfast like a rock. Nothing could stop him or tempt him to keep silence. Listen, O Israel, to the word of God. You have abandoned our God. Your prophet speaks in the name of idols. Your priests offer sacrifices to these idols. 
Your hands are stained with the blood of the innocent. Isn't this Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, the priest? Ah, yes, he is. Where was he all these days? Looks like he's sick. He is pretending to be a prophet. A prophet? No, not another one. We have enough of them already. Come back to God. He is merciful. Abandon your idols and do justice. Jeremiah, you better watch what you're saying. Are you trying to be a prophet? Jeremiah, my son, why don't you be a priest like your father? What you're doing is quite dangerous. I am only obeying our God, and I think you should do the same. Hmm. At first, however, things were easy for the young prophet. The good king Josiah was reigning, and he tried to make the people give up idol worship. King Josiah gave instructions to destroy the idols in the country. Altars and temples dedicated to idols were destroyed. From now on, Israel will have only one temple. Sacrifices will be offered only in Jerusalem. Idol worship will now be considered a crime deserving capital punishment. Hmm. Josiah is a smart king. We are becoming an empire like in the times of David. It won't be long before Solomon's glory returns to Israel. Yes, all the prophets are saying the same too. No, not every prophet agrees. Jeremiah is still preaching about the coming disaster. <laughs> he is a fool. But the good days didn't last for long. In a few days, there was a war at Megiddo against Egyptians, and Josiah died fighting a furious battle. Oh no! He was such a good king. Yes. He took care of his people very well. Hmm, maybe, maybe he was punished by the Egyptian gods for destroying their idols. What? Hmm, you're right. Maybe we should worship Baal from now on. Hey, look! Isn't that Jeremiah walking up the stairs? Yes, it's Jeremiah. What is he going to do? People of Israel, God is punishing you for your sins. But Josiah was a good king. He destroyed all the idols. True faith means not just destroying the idols. It means writing the laws of the covenant in your heart. But but we offer sacrifices as commanded by the God. Your sacrifices are in vain. No one will be able to save you. Move. Mm. Move aside. People of Israel, do not believe in empty promises. Who are you? How dare you speak like that in the house of the Lord? Yes, this is the house of the Lord. God will protect his house. You steal, murder, and commit other crimes. Then come to the house of the Lord. Do you think you will be safe here? What is this place? A den of robbers? Huh? How dare you? Where are the guards? Yes, master. Arrest this man. He's speaking against our temple and our God. Take him away. Come with me, you. Jeremiah was arrested that day, and he was produced before the judges. The judges sent him away with an order forbidding him to enter the temple ever. Jeremiah left the city that day and lived in exile for many years. In the meantime, Israel was attacked by King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Israel became the servant of Babylon and they were forced to pay heavy taxes. Even Jeremiah, he was exiled. He continued to write his message which he could no longer cry out loud. Ride this Baruch. It is not truth, but it's hypocrisy going in Israel. Corruption is increasing day by day, and the people have forgotten their Lord. Master, are these the words of the Lord? Mm. Yes, unfortunately, yes. His words are so terrible. 
Will the people accept his message? I don't know, Baruch. I hope they listen to his message. Huh? You have written down everything the Lord has told me. Tomorrow is the day of fasting. Since I am not allowed to enter the temple, you must go and read the scroll before all people. But Master, they will arrest me if I read this before them. Don't worry, my son. The Lord will protect you. I... I... All right, Master. I will do as you have told. As Jeremiah had instructed, Baruch went to the temple next day and read the message from God to all the people. And the priests have become two. I will not accept any sacrifices from you. Your nation will be destroyed. Huh? No, it can't be true. But before Baruch could finish reading from the scroll, the officials of the king came and arrested him. Your people will become slaves. And you... Baruch, stop it. You must come with me to the king. Huh? God, take the scroll with him. Baruch was taken to the king, and the priest read out the message from the scroll. And because of this, your city will be destroyed. Huh? Your temple will be destroyed. Your people will become slaves again. What? How dare he? Give me that scroll. Here, my lord. Ugh. Ugh. Word of God, huh? Ugh. Arrest him and send him to the prison. I'll show him who the real God is. Ugh. No. No. Please. Baruch was arrested that day, and the king gave strict orders prohibiting Jeremiah to enter the city. Jeremiah, in the meantime, received another message from God. He went to the valley of Ben-Hinnom and carried a jar along with him. This is the valley where you sacrificed innocent babies to idols. This place will hereafter be called as the Valley of Slaughter. Huh? Oh no! Father, is it true? Is the God going to punish us? But there among the crowd was Pashur, the chief priest. He got infuriated by Jeremiah's words, and he went upon him and struck him. I will put an end to your prophecies today. Here! Ah! Uh, gods! Take him to the palace! Jeremiah was taken to the palace and was beaten the whole night. Ugh! Ugh! Ah! You... You and your friends will become slaves to the king of Babylon. Jerusalem will be reduced to ashes. Ah! ah. Ha! You are a fool! And after a few days, Jeremiah got another message from God. Jeremiah, make a yoke of wood, put it on your neck, and go to the king, Zedekiah. Yes, my lord. God told Jeremiah that the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, was his loyal servant. He was using the king to destroy Israel and its people. Jeremiah was upset hearing the news, and he decided to go and deliver the message anyways. The next day there was a meeting at the palace. King Zedekiah had invited neighboring countries to unite and fight against Nebuchadnezzar. We must unite and fight against Babylon. Yes, Babylon will fall if stand together. Wait, who is that? Isn't that Jeremiah, the prophet? <sighs> <sighs> what are you doing? How dare you enter the palace? I... I came here to deliver the word of God. 
I have handed over all your countries to my servant Nebuchadnezzar. If you refuse to obey him and bend to his yoke, then your kingdom will be destroyed. How dare you! We are going to break the yoke of Babylon like this. Ha! Huh. You broke the wooden yoke. The Lord will place an iron yoke over your shoulder and you will die in a foreign land. Wait! I think we must listen to him. No, my king. He's just a mad person. Look at him. Does he look like a prophet to you? Don't worry. I'm going to take care of him. Guards, arrest him and throw him in the pit. Huh? Nobody believed Jeremiah. They arrested him and threw him in a well in the courtyard. The well was a horrible place. There was not enough water in the well, but there was deep, wet mud at the bottom into which he kept sinking. You and your prophecies will end in this well. And they left him there without food to die. Why was I ever born? Why should I live at all like this? Hated and despised by everyone. Lord, your word was my delight. It was sweet as honey. And I proclaimed it with joy. Why is it that you have abandoned me now? Jeremiah. Huh? God? Jeremiah, you speak only noble words. You shall be as my own mouth. Mm. Thank you, God. That night, Jeremiah, who had sung waist deep, was saved by a servant of the king. Master, master. Huh. Who are you? Shh. Be silent, master. I've come to save you. Tie this rope below your arms. I will lift you up, master. The servant pulled out Jeremiah from the well and saved his life. Thank you, my son. May God bless you. Thank you, master. We mustn't stay here any longer. Come, let's get out of here. Heeding the advice of priests and his ministers, King Zedekiah stopped paying tribute to Nebuchadnezzar. And as Jeremiah had foretold, in a few days, the Babylonian army attacked the city of Jerusalem. The Babylonian army pulled down the walls of Jerusalem. And they set fire to the palace and the temples. Everything happened like how Jeremiah had prophesied. They looted the town and took all their valuables. Thousands of people were enslaved and taken to Babylon. They killed King Zedekiah, the ministers and all the priests as well. And one day, Jeremiah, I punished those who broke my covenant. The days are coming when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel. I will write my law in their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Jeremiah was destined to live in utter loneliness. He was always made fun of, and he was ill-treated everywhere. He lived long enough to witness the disasters he had predicted, but after his death, people realized that he spoke the truth, and that made them repent and return to God. Oh, it's such a sad story. Hmm, I know. But as they say, God works in mysterious ways. Hey, look at him. Looks like he was listening your story too. Ha ha ha. Were you listening to my story, you cutie? Hey, what are we gonna call him? Hmm. He, he growls a lot. Let's call him Lion. No, no. Let's call him Tiger. Ha ha! Tiger! That's a nice name. I like it too. Alright, 
It's time for the questions. Yes, father. Hmm. Now, Matthew, answer this. Where was Jeremiah born? Anathoth. Jeremiah was born in the village of Anathoth. Very good, Matthew. Now, who can answer this? What was the first vision that God showed Jeremiah? God showed him a vision of an almond tree covered with white flowers and a cooking pot. And George, what did he mean by these visions? In his vision, like the white flowers in the almond tree that was awake while everything else was dead, God said that he would fulfill every one of his words. And what about the cooking pot? God showed him that like the cooking pot tilting from the north, Israel was waiting to be attacked from the north. Very good, George. That's all for today. Now go home and take care of our new member. Here you go. Thank you, Father. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. some time and we'll have lunch together but i'm hungry i wanna eat something now you're always hungry you wanna eat all the time what about the sheep then why do they get to eat all the time ha 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 he's tired lucy we've been walking for a long time let's rest here for some time let's sit down here then and matthew here's an apple for you Hey, look at that cloud. Doesn't it look like Jimmy? Ha 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 ha! You're right. What is that? Wow, it's a rainbow. Wow, it's so beautiful. wonder who created this lovely rainbow and who could have created this beautiful sky and these mountains and everything that we see around us do you know george i don't know lucy hey look father john is here let's go and ask him hello little one how have you been Oh, Jimmy, you're here too? Hey, ha ha ha. Good day, Father. It is a lovely day indeed, children. Father, can you tell us who created this world? Is it God? Yes, children. Our great God created everything that you see around. You can read all about it in the Bible. Can you tell us what the Bible says, Father? Oh, yes. Do you want to hear the story of how God created this world? Come children, sit down. I will tell you the story of how God created this wonderful world. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth had no shape and was empty. Darkness covered the earth, and God moved over the water. And God said, Let there be light. I will call the light day, and I will call the dark night. Now let the water below and the water above be separated. 
I will call the space sky. Let the waters below the sky all be gathered in one place and let dry land appear. I will call the dry land earth. Now let the land produce all kinds of plants and trees. God was very happy with the work he had done so far but he still had a lot more work to do I will make the sun and moon and stars in the sky they will separate the day from the night to show the seasons and also light the night sky Let the waters be filled with living creatures. And let the earth fly across the earth On the 6th day God made all the animals Let the land produce every kind of living animal There will be domestic and wild animals both large and small and each will be able to reproduce its kind let us make people they will be in our image just like us Then God made a human being a man who was like himself God put the man in charge of all the fish and birds and animals he had made Let the people rule over the fish in the sea the birds in the air and the animals on the land and all creatures that move on the ground Finally God finished his work. He was very happy. So on the 7th day he had a rest. I think so. You're the maker of everything. Come with me, Adam. There are things we have to do, and things I want to show you. You are in charge of all the animals and plants. They are for you to look after. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you cannot eat from the tree that gives knowledge of what is good and what is evil. If you eat this fruit you will die. Huh? Adam, what will you call this one? Lion. I'll call him lion. These animals are yours to look after. 
you must name them all. Adam, you have done well. But now every male animal has a female mate except you. It is not good for you to live alone. So I will make a female partner for you. Go to sleep. And when you wake up, you too will have a female partner. While Adam was asleep, God took a rib from his side and made him a female partner. My female partner has been taken from my own flesh and bone. I will call her woman because she was taken out of man. the fruit of any tree except this one. God said that if we eat its fruit, we will Ooh. die. But when Adam was away, Satan decided to approach Eve to tempt her. What about that tree? The fruit over there looks very tasty. God said that we cannot eat from that tree or even touch it. He said that we can eat the fruit of any tree in the garden except that one. If we do eat from that tree, we will die. Ha 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 ha. Did God say that? You will not die. God knows that when you eat from the fruit of that tree, you will be just like him. Your eyes will be opened. And you will know the difference between good and evil. And Satan who appeared in front of Eve started tempting her slowly and slowly. He lured her to the tree and was about to tempt her to eat it. said no. That is because God does not want you to be the same as him. The fruit will do that. It will make you great and powerful just like him. Woman, where are you? Eve gave the fruit to Adam and when Adam ate the fruit, he committed the sin too. Uh oh! Once they ate the fruit, they realized they were naked. Oh. They covered their body with leaves. Adam, where are you? I'm here, I'm here. I heard you in the garden. I'm hiding here because I'm naked. Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Well, woman gave me some of the fruit to eat. Uh, and I ate it. Woman, what have you done? The serpent tricked me into eating the fruit. You will be punished and cursed for tricking man and woman. You will crawl on your belly and eat dust forever. 
you will be the lowest among the animals. You and people will be enemies forever. Woman, giving birth to children will be more painful because of what you have done. Your husband will also rule over you. Adam, I'm most disappointed with you. You listen to the woman instead of me. I commanded that you do not eat fruit from that tree, but you did. You will have to work hard all your life to produce enough food for your family. Thorns and weeds will grow in the fields, and only sweat and painful work will you produce food for your family. Finally, you die and return to the ground you came from. You came from the dust, and to the dust you will return. Woman, I will name you Eve. Because you will be the mother of all people. The people have become like us, with the knowledge of everything that is good and evil. They cannot eat from the tree of life and live forever. I will send them away from the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve were clothed by God and shut out of the bliss and glory of paradise to live in the wilderness. God decided to guard both the entrance to the garden and the way to the tree of life. So he commanded Cherubim to guard the entrance and a flaming sword that turns this way and that to the way of the tree of life. Adam and Eve had to learn to live without God's close help. They planted seed and waited for the grain and fruit to grow. They built a house to protect them from the heat and the rain. Then Eve had a baby boy and they called him Cain. Later, Eve had another son and she called him Abel. He also grew strong, but instead of working in the fields, he became a shepherd. They looked after the animals that Adam and Eve had kept for milk and wool. Finally, everything seemed to be going well. Both sons washed and prepared their food. Hi, King. What are you doing with all that food? Some is for dinner and some is for God. Ah, now that's a very good idea and just what God would like you to do. Hey, are you bringing in another lamb, son? No, father. I'm going to offer this lamb to God. I know it will please him. It is the best lamb we have. You know, we have two good sons. They have both taken the best of their efforts to give to God. It will surely make God happy. The boys are at home now, preparing the food. All will be well. Why should God get all the best fruit and vegetables? Surely he would not reason this having some. This fruit took me months to grow. Are we having lamb for dinner, little brother? No, King. I'm preparing it for God. It is my best young lamb. Why do you copy me? I have collected the best of my harvest to give to God. You give him your offering another time. Let me have the honor this time. I can't do that, Cain. The meat must be prepared straight away. Otherwise, it'll go bad. I think God will be happy to get both offerings. That way, God can have it all. All right then. But I think God would prefer my offering. Abel wanted to give his best young lamb to God, but Cain did not want God to have all the best crops. And God accepted Abel's offering. Cain, why are you angry? 
Why do you only stare at the ground? You will be accepted by me if you do what is right. But if you do wrong, sin is waiting to destroy you. You must learn to overcome the sin in your life. But Abel could not control his anger and was about to commit a sin. Abel, Abel, come on, I have something to show you in the fields. What is it? What's wrong? Come quietly, don't wake mother and father. Come and I'll show you. Cain 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 where are you Cain Cain Not too easy is it Growing all this food for the family? Not like just sitting on a hillside watching some sheep and goats? This takes hard work. It's worth much more than your lamb. Cain, where are you? Ah! Oh no, what have I done? Ah! Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know. Do I have to take care of my brother all the time? Cain, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now, you are under a curse. Oh, oh God. <laughs> this ground is soaked with your brother's blood. You will no longer be able to grow plentiful crops in the ground. You will be a homeless wanderer for the rest of your life. Oh, God, your punishment is more than I can accept. You are driving me from my land and family. I will be hated from your presence. I will wander for the rest of my life, never finding rest. And anyone who finds me will kill me. Cain. No one will harm you. I will put a mark on you. Anyone who kills you will suffer your punishment seven times over. Oh. Cain left Adam and Eve and the presence of God. He wandered to the land of Nod. He took a wife and she gave birth to a son and they named him Enoch. And he built a city and called it after his son. Meanwhile, Adam and Eve had another son they named Sith. They said, God has given us this child in place of Abel, who was killed by Cain. Some of the people in this time began to worship God. Adam and Eve lived to a very great age, and they had many more children who also had their own families. So, 
the population of the earth increased quickly. So children, did you all enjoy the story? Yes, father. That's great. So tomorrow, I'll tell you another story from the Bible. In our next story from the Bible, we will see and hear how the world became a bad place to live in. Finally, God could only trust one man and his family to help start the world again. This is the story of Noah and the ark. I will meet you again tomorrow. Bye, Father. Goodbye, dears.